This video will give you the keys to successfully set up and connect a community with the CAP XM Access Control System and MyQ Business. We'll break the process down into three parts. Surveying the site and setting up the Community Facility Database. Pre-configuring the CAPXM. Then, installing the CAPXM at the job site. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. Let's dive in. One of the most important things you must do to ensure a successful community installation is to talk to the IT team or whoever is responsible for the network on site. They need to ensure their network is configured to allow our systems to transmit and receive data. Go to the Partner Portal at partner.liftmaster.com and download and print the site survey form. This tool will become your best friend as you gather information and confirm the site is properly set up. When installing our access control products that transmit video, such as the CAP XLV or CAP XM controller, a robust internet connection with ample bandwidth is needed. For each installed controller, LiftMaster recommends a minimum upload speed of 5 megabits per second. This means an installation with two controllers should plan to provide a minimum upload speed of 10 megabits per second. Additional bandwidth may be needed considering usage of other devices on the network, like cameras and computers. Wi-Fi and high-speed wired internet are both acceptable methods for connecting the controller to the internet. Upgrading a phone line to DSL is an acceptable type of high-speed wired internet. Cellular service is not recommended for video applications. For installations using static IP, note the following details. IP address, net mask, gateway, primary DNS, secondary DNS, and tertiary DNS. For Wi-Fi installations, make note of the network name and password. The internet connection must be available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Network proximity is another consideration. For ethernet connections, the controller location must be within 300 feet of the network switch or router. For Wi-Fi connections, the signal strength must be sufficiently strong. Wi-Fi extenders should be avoided because they introduce latency and can negatively affect video quality. As you walk through the job site, if the CAPXM will be used to control LiftMaster gate operators, make sure the physical location meets UL325 and ASTM F2200 requirements where these standards apply. Make sure AC power is available and meets these requirements. There needs to be a dedicated 120 volt AC outlet rated for 10 amps. Depending on the site configuration, the outlet may be located in a separate room, requiring a run of DC wiring to where the CAPXM will be mounted. The maximum distance of this wiring is 300 feet using 14 gauge two conductor solid wire. For outdoor installations, the dedicated outlet must be inside a weatherproof NEMA 4 electrical enclosure. Check for appropriate grounding that meets the requirements of local and national electrical codes. This is your opportunity to identify the doors and other devices that the CAPXM will be controlling. Work with the community manager to obtain a diagram of the community layout. This will assist in creating the plan for the devices that need to be installed. If any weakened credential readers or remote control devices are to be used with the CAPXM, make sure they are compatible. We recommend using the LMMC Mini Card Reader. Visiting the site also allows you to identify tools and other items you may need on the day of installation. In addition to the community layout, work with the community manager to obtain the contact information for all the people who will be added to the database, including residents, workers, managers, and the like. After concluding the site survey and prior to arrival for installation, work with the community manager to make sure all required wiring is routed. Power wiring and control wiring need to be routed through separate conduit. 
Before we get started setting up the community database, you will need the CP number for the controller. Unpack the controller and use the key to open it. Write down the CP number from the label inside. Open a browser and head to account.myq.com. You'll need to do a few things. They include adding the community as a facility, which includes setting up the subscription, adding credentials such as card readers and remote controls, and assigning them to the people, adding the community manager as the facility manager or owner, adding all the residents and other people who will have access to the facility, and finally, updating your contact information in the facility. This will allow you to test that everything is set up properly after you install the controller. Let's get familiar with some of the most important screens. Click the plus sign to add a facility. When creating a new facility, several payment options are available. You may use your LiftMaster account number or choose payment via ACH or credit card. If you want to set up a LiftMaster account, click the Create New Account Number button to begin the credit application process. It may take a few days to receive your account number. On the pop-up window, click Create Facility. Select Community. Click Next. Fill in all the required information wherever you see a red asterisk. Enter the details for the facility manager. Click Next. Select the payment method. For this demonstration, we'll select Account. Click Next. Click on your name and select Billing from the menu. Here, you will choose a smart community subscription that will be billed either monthly or yearly. Plans are based on the type of controller and the number of access points. Click a radio button to select a plan. For this video, we will choose the MyQ Community Plan. Select the number of access points you are adding. We are adding one access point. There are several add-ons. Video events are stored for one day as part of the regular subscriptions. To store video events for 30 days, choose the 30-day video storage plan. Select Community by MyQ Resident License to enable residents to use the mobile app. Enter the number of app licenses. Click Proceed to Checkout. Edit the payment details or the billing address as needed. Then click Activate Subscription. Click Add Devices. If you chose the resident video license add-on and you aren't already using Phone.com as your voice over internet provider, you will be prompted to set up Phone.com for service. On the Facility Audio and Video Call Setup screen, choose I already have a Phone.com account if you already have an account. Click Next and you will be prompted to log in to your Phone.com account. Or select I need to register a new Phone.com account to set up a new account. Click Next. Enter your information. Agree to the terms and click Next. Your new phone number will be displayed. Click Next. Review your order and click Next. Enter your billing information. Then click Pay Now. You'll return to the device management screen with a message prompting you to add a CAPXM to enable resident video calling. Click Add Now. On the Add Device screen, select the device you are adding. We are adding the CAPXM. Enter the CP number for the controller. This is the number you wrote down from the label when you opened the controller. Enter a name for the controller. Click Save. The device is now listed in the Facilities Device Management tab.
select the device or entrance. You need to associate the phone.com account with one or more doors. Click Call Settings. Click to allow access for the desired doors. Click Save. Next, add the credentials. Click to expand the menu sidebar. Click Credentials. Click Add Credentials. Select the credential type. A credential is a barcode, card, long-range RFID tag or transmitter that is used to gain access to the community. Select the format being used by the community. To add multiple credentials at one time, select Bulk Load. Then enter the first and last credential numbers. Enter the facility code. Click Save. You can also enter a single credential if you leave Bulk Load unchecked. Now let's add people, starting with the Community Manager. Click to expand the menu sidebar. Click People. Click Add Person. Fill in the required fields. Choose the role of Facility Manager or Facility Owner. A facility owner has the control to edit all database information related to the facility, including billing. A facility manager can edit almost everything except for the facility itself, the permissions for roles, and they can't view billing information. Enter the email address. Select Send MyQ Smart Access Invite. The community manager will get an email with instructions on what they need to do next. Fill in the address. The information that should appear in the directory for the individual and assign credentials. Be sure to add the individual to an access group. There are three default groups, resident, staff, and vendor. Click Save. Add the rest of the people to the database. There are three roles. Dealer techs, who help set up the community facility or who may need to provide support. Residents, people who live in the community and who will be using the MyQ Community app. And access managers, security personnel or community administrators who need to update user information in the database. Other users who don't require MyQ business access, such as landscapers or maintenance people and vendors, do not need to have a role assigned. You will also need to check the box to invite residents to use the MyQ Community app. The support team at LiftMaster is able to assist with bulk loading resident data to the community database. For details, contact us at the number on the screen. Lastly, update your own profile in the facility. You'll need to add credentials so you can test the function of the card reader, the PIN code, and the MyQ Community app. In order to test the MyQ Community app, Check the box to invite yourself to use the MyQ Community app. You'll complete the rest of the database setup when you open the CAPXM. Now, let's get the MyQ Community app set up. Check your email for an invitation to MyQ Community. Tap the App Store link, and you will be taken to the MyQ Community app. Tap Get. Tap Open. If you already have an account, choose Login. Otherwise, choose Create Account. Select your country. Agree to the terms. Enter your name. Enter your email. Create a password. Verify your email by entering the code you received. If you sign up with the same email that the app license is associated to in MyQ, simply click Accept Invitation. Otherwise, enter the access code sent via the email invite. Enter your address. Verify your phone number. Enter the code that was sent to your phone.
To join the community, tap Accept Invitation. We recommend pre-configuring the CAPXM at your workshop prior to installing it at the job site. This allows you to confirm ability to connect to the internet, connection to the facility database, and basic functionality of placing a call, swiping a card, entering a code, and using the MyQ community app. Here's what you'll need at your workshop in order to pre-configure the CAPXM. An Ethernet or Wi-Fi network connection. A computer with internet access. A MyQ account with your dealer owner or dealer technician login credentials. A mobile device. Let's talk about what comes in the box. The system includes the CAPXM access control panel, a power supply, keys, gooseneck gasket, and electronic components. Set up the CAPXM on your workbench. Unlock the CAPXM and open it. Locate the power supply and observe the stripped and tinned red and black wires. Locate the power input connector on the control board. Notice the markings showing plus and minus and observe the orientation of the terminal block. You need to make sure you connect wires for the correct polarity. Remove the terminal block. Loosen the screws in the terminal block. Insert the red wire into the terminal block hole that aligns with the plus terminal on the board. Insert the black wire into the other hole. Tighten the screws to secure the wires. Reattach the terminal block to the power input connector, making sure the red wire aligns to the plus terminal and the black wire aligns to the minus terminal. The bracket for the credential reader is located by the control board. To mount the Wiegand credential reader to the CAPXM door, follow these steps. Remove the power input terminal block. Remove the USB 3. Remove the postal lock harness. Remove the door board 1 and 2 harness. Remove the card reader bracket from the CAPXM. Remove the mounting bracket from the card reader and locate the mounting hardware for the reader. Attach the mounting bracket to the reader bracket. Reattach the mounting bracket to the card reader. and secure it in place. Reinstall the card reader bracket, which should now securely hold the card reader. Reattach the power input terminal block. Reattach the USB 3. Reattach the postal lock harness. Reattach the door board 1 and 2 harness. We will demonstrate connecting the reader to door 1 of the door board. Remove the yellow-green terminal block from the door control board. Connect red to the 12 VDC connector. Connect black to the ground connector. Connect green to data 0. Connect white to data 1. Reattach the terminal block. If there are any other devices you wish to test, connect them now according to the instructions in the manual. To enter admin mode, locate DIP switch number 1 on the control board. To ensure the CAPXM boots in admin mode, flip DIP switch number 1 to the on position, which is towards the camera. Plug in the power supply. Green and red LEDs on the door board will blink when powering up. A green status LED will turn on solid once booted. 
The CAPXM will display the MyQ logo and other code while booting up. When the boot up is complete, you'll see a welcome message. The CP number will be displayed. Make a note of this number. For this demonstration, we'll be connecting to a wired network. Locate the LAN port on the control board. Locate the LEDs on the LAN port. Connect the Ethernet cable from a hub, switch, or router to the LAN port on the control board. When a connection to an active network device is established, the yellow LED on the LAN port will light up or flicker. If the yellow LED is not lit, first check that the router is powered up. Also, check the connections on the CAPXM and the router. On the CAPXM display, tap Continue to be taken to the Network Setup screen. On the display, select Wired Network. Tap Continue. Then tap Connect. The screen will update to show network connection status information. Tap Continue to Admin Mode. To confirm the camera is functioning correctly, tap Audio Video. The live stream from the camera will be displayed in the Camera Settings window. Exit Admin Mode by flipping DIP switch number 1 to the OFF position. By now, you've already set up the community database by adding residents, credentials, and more. When the CAPXM connects to MyQ, the database will be downloaded. This can take up to five minutes depending on the speed of the internet connection. When download is complete, the buttons on the screen will display directory and entry code. Confirm the clock, welcome message, and background image are displaying the correct information. First, Test the connection to the MyQ community app. Tap the directory and search for your own name. Call yourself. The app will receive the incoming call. Answer the call. Confirm the microphone and speaker audio are working. Use the app to grant access. The LCD screen will display access granted. Next, test granting yourself access using hold to unlock in the app. This is similar to granting access using a remote control. Press Hold to unlock in the app. The controller will click. The LCD screen will not show any message. Next, test granting access via a regular phone call. Tap the directory and search for your own name. Call yourself. The app will receive the incoming call. Do not answer the call using the app. After 30 seconds, the call will roll over to your regular phone. Answer the call. Press 9 to grant access. Also, test credentials. Touch a card to the card reader. The controller will click, but the LCD screen will not show any message. Test the entry code. Tap Entry Code. Enter the code on the numeric keypad. Tap the green Enter button. The LCD screen will display Access Granted. To ensure the CAPXM boots in admin mode, the next time you power it on at the job site, flip DIP switch number 1 to the ON position. Disconnect power to the controller and prepare it for transportation to the installation site. As you learned during the site survey and preparation, the CAPXM installation requires a variety of wires, including power, relay connections, grounding, internet, and accessory cables. When you arrive at the job site, make sure these wires are available and ready for connection. Open the door and lay the CAPXM face down on a flat surface with the cover hanging over the side. Use the packing material such as the box it was shipped in if that's available. Identify which knockouts need to be removed based on your application. For this installation, we'll punch four knockouts for mounting and the bottom knockouts for wiring. Use a small center punch tool and mallet to carefully tap the knockouts. Use pliers to remove the metal knockout tabs. The CAPXM needs to be securely mounted to a flat surface or pedestal. 
Position the unit for mounting, pulling the wiring through the knockout. The gasket is not needed for a surface mount installation. Secure the CAP-XM to the surface using the appropriate hardware for your application. Stainless steel hardware is recommended. Use of zinc-plated or galvanized hardware is not recommended because of the risk for rusting. Connect the site's ground wire to the ground post in the CAP-XM. Proper grounding protects the CAP-XM from damaging electrical transients. Be sure to check and follow all national and local codes for proper grounding procedures. During your site survey, you confirmed availability of a dedicated 120-volt AC outlet rated for 10 amps. Identify the power wiring leading from the CAP-XM mounting location. Connect to the stripped DC output wires on the power supply. Connect the black wire on the power supply to the negative wire from the CAP-XM and the red wire on the power supply to the positive wire from the CAP-XM. Consult the manual for allowable wire run distances and recommended wire gauge. Remove the power input terminal block from the control board. Connect the power wires to the terminal block with the positive connecting to the plus terminal and the negative connecting to the minus terminal. Reattach the terminal block to the control board. Plug the power supply into the dedicated outlet after all connections have been made. The CAP-XM will boot into admin mode. Let's get the network connection set up. Tap Network. Tap Change Network Settings. You'll be prompted to select the network type. There are three options. Wi-Fi Network, Wired Network, which configures automatically, manual setup of a wired connection. If you're connecting to a wired network for automatic configuration, or DHCP, plug in the Ethernet cable. Choose Wired Network and tap Continue. Connecting to the network may take a few moments. The network status will show connected. Tap Connect. Next, let's check the camera. On the display, press Continue to Admin. Press the Audio Video button. You will be able to see the live feed from the camera. Next, disconnect all electrical power to the CAP-XM and any powered accessories such as gate operators and door locks. Open the controller. One CAP-XM can control up to two doors. Doors are devices such as gate operators, mag locks, or door strikes. We will demonstrate connecting a device to door one. Connect the gate operator or door lock wires to the primary relay. Most applications use the normally open and common. Remove the terminal block from the primary relay of the desired door. Insert the wires from the gate operator and secure with a small screwdriver. Plug the terminal block back onto the control board. Connect the other end of the cable to the device being controlled. If using Request to Exit, connect the Request to Exit switch to the Door 1 REX connector. This feature must also be activated in the MyQ Community Web platform. To monitor the position of the gate or a door using a door status sensor, wire to the status connector. To supervise the monitored connection, you'll need to supply two 1000 ohm resistors. One will be wired in series and the other in parallel on the side of the gate operator or door. 
This feature must also be activated in the MyQ Community Web platform. Restore power. To exit admin mode, flip dip switch number one to the off position on the CAPXM control board. It's time to test the setup. Perform the same tests you did during the setup on your workbench. Test, granting access through the app. Using hold to unlock, granting access from a phone call. Using a credential such as a card and using an entry code. Once you've confirmed everything is working, don't forget to delete your test information from the facility. The installation is complete. Be sure to set aside time to help the community manager to get up and running. For more detailed information, including wiring diagrams, please refer to the CAPXM installation manual or visit partner.liftmaster.com.